Welcome back. Now, if the Prime Minister loses Tuesday's vote on her Brexit plan, what next? Because if she's got a plan B, she certainly hasn't told anyone about it. And that's encouraged MPs to come up with their own, including the Conservative Robert Halfen. Here's what happened when I went to his constituency in Harlow, Essex. If you want to find out the mood among original Leave voters, you could do worse than come to Harlow in Essex. 68% of people here voted to leave. In fact, every district in Essex voted out. Working class but aspirational, people first arrived in this new town from the bombed out streets of East London after the Second World War. It's a natural home of Mondeo Man. Electorally, what happens in Harlow doesn't just stay in Harlow. History shows that whichever party wins here secures the keys to number 10. Would you like them to back Theresa May or, or not? I think mathematically it's impossible for it to go through, but I think it's a really sad day. A really, really sad day. Yeah. And why is that? You think it's a good deal? Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a good or a bad deal, but it's perhaps better than the, uh, the than no deal. I'll oh, just, just think it's, um, it's a shame that they're not helping her at all. None of them. They all seem to be against her. So uh, in, instead of doing all this argument, they'll get their heads together and uh, we'll push it through. Are you worried then that MPs are trying to block Brexit? Yes, they yeah. are, definitely. Everything just seems very confused at the moment. Um, it's quite frustrating because really it's only sort of two months away that we should be, you know, exiting and actually nothing's really sort of confirmed. It's just gone on too long. It's it's aggravating now. Um, you've got people that want us to come out and, and people that don't like what the MPs, they, you know, they're like children. Mm. I'm just sick of it all. We just want it to be over. <laughs> we would love for them to focus on something other than Brexit, like health, education, welfare, anything, basically. And we think they're behaving like complete buffoons. <laughs> and we really, really dislike the whole of Parliament at the moment. I was really struck by the visceral frustration that people here in Harlow feel towards politicians. The phrase that kept coming up again and again was that they're behaving like children. There was also more support for Theresa May's deal than I was expecting, not because people think it's brilliant, but because they want it all to be over. That is wishful thinking. 56 people are employed at this Harlow business, making water softeners, filters and calcium treatment units. At European Water Care, they want to be optimistic about Brexit. They're sourcing more material locally and the weak pound has certainly helped exports. But it's uncertainty that's the problem. I would say, generally, we've had no help or advice from government. So no help or advice really at all? Not then? really that I can really sort of hang my hat on or plan with. We've had no planning tools. Just communicate through .gov.uk to say, you should do this, but then again, you should do that. Nothing cast iron. And that must be hard, that uncertainty. It's really hard as a business leader to, to plan for that eventuality. You know, I'm responsible for the employment of 56 people. You know, they all have mortgages and, and normal day-to-day -day worries. So what have you stockpiled and how long have you we've, given yourself? We've, we've stockpiled raw materials as a manufacturer to take us over a, a, a kind of a three-month period, uh, March, April, May. And, and into June. And that's, and that's stuff you get from outside of the that's UK? That's mainly the stuff that we've got outside of the UK, so that our supply lines are not affected inside the UK. And you voted to leave in the referendum? I did vote to leave, yes. So it's not Brexit that's the issue, it's the way the government's handling Brexit then? Exactly right. Over coffee in his favourite cafe, the Conservative MP for Harlow, Robert Halfen, explained why he can't support the Prime Minister's deal. At least, not yet. As it currently stands, I'm not going to be supporting the Prime Minister because it keeps us in a spaghetti junction of EU bureaucracy. There's no end date to the backstop. We pay £39 billion of taxpayers' money up front without a trade, even a trade deal at the end, and I think there are significant problems. So I'm not able to support the Prime Minister unless the deal changes substantially by Tuesday. So there is a little bit of ripple rumours there if, if she pulls something out of the hat from the EU? Well, if she can show what we're getting for the £39 billion, if, if there is an end date to the backstop, or at least that Britain has a genuine legal unilateral right to withdraw from this open-ended uh, arrangement, infinite almost, arrangement with the EU, um, then maybe I would, uh, would support it. But as it currently stands, I think it is just too bureaucratic. It keeps us in all the EU uh, regulations and laws without any voice, without any right of, of veto and without any vote. And, and I just think that is wrong. So perhaps then, if the deal, as we expect, fails, she goes back to Brussels and comes back with something slightly different, you might back it? 
Of course, I don't like voting against the Prime Minister. I know that she's doing her best for the country. And if she came back and there were changes to uh, the deal and she presented them to Parliament, obviously I would look at it and see whether it was possible to support. But as it currently is, I feel that it would break the promise that I made to my constituents the day after the referendum in 2016. And I said that I will do everything to ensure that Brexit means Brexit. And when we vote on these things, it's a big thing. And I've thought about it almost every day for the last few months, uh, what we're doing, what the potential effect will be on our country. That's why I've thought hard about uh, another option. And I've worked very closely with a Labour MP, Lucy Powell, um, so that we go back to the coal market that we originally uh, joined. And it would be called Common Market 2.0, a different way of dealing with Europe, but making sure that Brexit means Brexit at the same time. Um, the model that you're talking about is sometimes referred to as the Norway option, isn't it? Like staying within um, a customs union in the single market. There's a big problem with that, isn't there? You'd have to accept free movement to people. Actually, Common Market 2.0 delivers the referendum result. It takes us out of the EU bureaucracy, very important. It takes us out of the European Court of Justice. It takes back control. Can I ask about immigration? I'll come on to it. It takes back control of our fish, of our farming, um, because we'd be out of the CAP and the CFP. And on freedom of movement, the important thing is that if there are any particular economic, environmental, or societal um, uh, difficulties, there, you can have uh, you can stop freedom of movement each individual. But you have no guarantee that that would be allowed? No, you do. Um, under the um, declaration in the EFTA agreement, you can have a break on freedom of movement for particular um, circumstances, and that's why I'm able to support this uh, deal. So you can stop freedom of movement um, when it is um, there are particular peculiar circumstances to your country. So if we judge that there was a particular economic impact that was very negative, Britain would be able to stop freedom of movement to, uh, uh, to this country. And the other issue with it as well is that we have not got very long to sort this out. Uh, we're supposed to be uh, leaving the EU uh, in just a couple of months' time. Um, joining you know, the, the common market, if you like it, it isn't just like opening up a Netflix account, is it? You haven't got any guarantees that this would be accepted. Well, um, I, don't, I don't agree with that. And this is one of the reasons why um, I wrote this pamphlet with Lucy Powell, a Labour MP, very different constituency in the North West, Manchester to uh, my mine hall in the east of England because there's a lot of support for it in the House of Commons from MPs from all parties. It's something that people can uh, get behind. Secondly, under the Prime Minister's withdrawal agreement, you, there was transition, a uh, two years transition. It is, it is uh, um, quite possible in the tr tr transition that we could make use that to um, enter the European free trade area because we're already a member of the EEA. Well, if you're relying on the transition, surely you need to back the Prime Minister's deal? Well, the problem with the Prime Minister's deal, for the reasons that I said, is that it gets us into a backstop. It creates two different regimes for Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. The, the, this would mean no backstop, no different arrangements to United Kingdom. It wouldn't weaken the United Kingdom in any way. You say that there's support um, among MPs in the House of uh, Commons. One of the big concerns that people have is that there seems to be no majority for anything. So what are the conversations that you've been having that make you think that this actually might have the backing to get through? Well, we don't know that there's no majority for any options. It hasn't been tested yet. But I've had, um, since I published this uh, pamphlet with Lucy Powell, we've had lots of MPs from all parties coming to uh, talk to us and we had a launch event in the House of Commons um, wanting to find out more about it and a lot of people are very sympathetic to this. Members of the government the, as well? Should the Prime Minister um, this deal not pass through? And yes, some members of the government have actually said well done, uh, I'm not going to name anyone, but um, and are very supportive of this. Should the Prime Minister's deal not get through the House of Commons, I think that this Common Market 2.0 is an option that many uh, MPs could rally behind because it takes back control. I mean, it delivers the referendum result, but ensures safeguards jobs, safeguards our economy, and ensures stability for business. Are you worried that, um, bearing in mind just how unhappy so many members of the public are with what they're seeing, that the Conservatives are going to be tainted by these Brexit divisions for a long time to come? If we get it right, I think that will be fine. But if we get it wrong, if there's a recession in our economy, um, and I think it would be incredibly uh, damaging for the Conservative Party, yes. And uh, this is why we have to get this right and have to uh, make sure we deliver on the referendum result because uh, uh, millions of people are expecting us to deliver for 17 million. We have to make sure that our economy is stable and, and uh, businesses are strong. Um, but if we get this wrong, I think uh, potentially 
um, we'll be in big trouble. Do you think Labour will win the next election? Um, I think the next election, hopefully, um, is a long way away, but I think that uh, the Labour parties in their domestic uh, issues are answering a lot of social concerns that people have, um, and we've got to do the same. Once Brexit is over, the Prime Minister's got to get back to addressing uh, burning injustices in our society, dealing with homelessness, promoting a skills agenda, ensuring that we have affordable housing and much more social housing. Um, because, uh, she's doing a lot of work on the NHS, which should be credited for, but we have to get back on that domestic agenda because otherwise um, people will say, you know, what are the Conservative Party for, what are their values, and they'll be listening to Labour Party, not us. Do you think that the Prime Minister has bought herself the time to do that? I think if we get Brexit through, there's all to play for. If we get a good deal for the British people, um, but she must get back on the agenda that she stood on the steps of Downing Street about addressing burning social injustice. There is a huge amount of um, social injustice in our country. There's a huge amount of people still struggling with the cost of living. There are too many people who are homeless who are living in poverty and it has to be our party that's the forefront of this agenda addressing these things. I mean some people say it's actually time for a new generation of Conservatives to take over after Brexit. Well, um, I'm happy whether it's new generation or old generation. There are plenty of people from all sections of the party, from all wings of the party, who have great ideas um, about the way uh, that it is. But we've got to get those ideas at the forefront. The government has to have a radical agenda. And do you think Labour agenda. is the one with the radical agenda now, not the Conservatives? I don't agree with the uh, prescription, but nevertheless, in many cases, they are uh, talking the language of the British people. People are struggling with the cost of living and they want to know that the Conservatives are on their side and we've got to prove that. Okay. Robert Halfen, uh, 